Hello, hello. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing our approach and landing here at Inverness Airport, which is actually just ahead of us. So at the end of the last video, we did a couple of steps just as we passed through 10,000 feet. So we turned on the landing lights, turned on the landing system. Actually, I haven't done them in this recording here and also turn on the CBL signs there. So those were the last couple of steps that we did in the last video. So now all we do is we simply continue flying along our approach here. There's a couple of things that it is worth doing as well. It's also worth going over to the EFIS control panel here and then just dialing the range down uh, because we're getting close to several waypoints now. You can see there's that kind of approach loop or that approach shape there. So if you just dial the range down, it just makes it a bit easier to read on the nav display here. Also, if you hit the constraints button here on the EFIS control panel, that shows you any altitude constraints and also any speed constraints that you have during the approach there. One last thing to check is the MCDU. So if you check the progress page, you just want to double check the nav accuracy here to make sure that it's reading high. So that basically um, allows the plane to follow the approach accurately. Um, if this wasn't showing as high, then you'd need to reconsider the approach or consider flying the approach manually. But this is showing as high. Uh, normally it does, so that's not a problem. So if you remember the charts for Inverness Airport, you'll remember that the approach actually starts at the INS uh, VOR station here. So if we just dial the range down so you can see this in a bit more detail. So as we pass over this VOR station, that's when the approach begins. So what we need to do is we need to tell the plane that yes, we actually want to fly the approach. So if we come down to the MCDU again, and then click on the performance page, you can see here that we have blue in blue activate approach phase. So just hit the soft key next to that. And then it says confirm that you want to enter the approach phase of flight and confirm that. And now the aircraft is going to start flying the approach and start following all of these constraints more accurately. You notice now that the plane is also beginning to slow down. So what will happen is the plane will slow down to what's called the green dot speed. If you look at the speed tape here, you can see that we've got a green dot at about 185 knots. So the aircraft will automatically slow down to that speed. If you have a look at the FCU here, you'll notice that I'm not making any changes there. The aircraft is still in managed speed mode. And you can see that it's slowing us down nicely there. So you'll notice as we pass over the Inverness VOR station, it turns us towards this leg. Now you'll notice on the nav display there that the uh, line actually changed there. So if the plane needs help reaching particular constraints, it will actually kind of adjust the, um, the flight path in real time just so it gives it the opportunity to make those changes there. in a little bit of turbulence there so the uh, engines are going a bit crazy that's, but that's okay so on the uh, primary flight display now you'll also notice that we've got standard is flashing so we've just passed through the transition altitude which if you remember from the last video was 4,000 feet so what we do is we left click on the barrel reference knob here to change that back to its local setting and then if you need to change that at all you would just simply whoops not do that you would simply dial it to the local uh, barometric pressure for the airport there. Now something else that you might start to hear and I expect I'll begin to hear this as I pass over this kind of stretch of land is you'll start to hear the radio altimeter will begin calling out. So it begins at 2500 feet and you'll notice at the bottom of the attitude indicator you'll have the uh, radio altitude will be listed right at the very bottom here. Now, if you're passing over bumpy terrain, like the Scottish Highlands, for example, then you might hear the same call out multiple times. So, as I fly over this stretch of land here, I might expect to hear the um, radio altimeter call out 2,500 feet. And it might do that several times, because as the, kind of the undulation in the land, um, as the aircraft passes over it, the undulation of the land will change what the altitude, or the radio altitude is. So you can see we're about 2000 cl closing up to 2500 2500 barometric you can see we have the number there at the bottom now 
but as we pass over different pieces of land you might see that altitude go back up again so you might hear the call out multiple times which again is normal it's to be expected it's not a bug um, with the uh, with the sim at all so now we're beginning a right hand turn and we're going to be coming up towards the localizer now so if you're going to intercept the localizer you need to intercept it at uh, less than 90 degrees so given the current angle that we're going to be flying we won't be able to intercept it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we begin the turn onto the localizer before I activate the approach button here on the FCU because we're not flying um, at a 90 degree angle we're actually flying at a greater than a 90 degree angle so um, we will uh, we will, as I said, well, I'll enable the approach hold as we begin our turn towards the, uh, the runway there. Again, at this point, you're just checking the flight progress. So if we have a look at the landing system, we've got the magenta diamond there, which shows us that we are now below the glide slope, which is what we expect is how the approach should be flown. So that's all looking good there. So before we intercept the, the uh, localizer, what we can do is we can set this first stage of flaps there. And what will happen is the aircraft will automatically begin to slow down as we do. So if I set flaps one now, you notice that we now get uh, a green S on the speed tape. So the green dot speed and this S speed relate to the speed at which flaps and slats can be extended. So the aircraft will automatically slow down to this S speed and hold that. So once we reach that S speed, I'm going to set flaps two now and you'll notice now we now get a green F, so the aircraft again will automatically slow down to that speed. Now that we're turning on towards the localizer, what I'm going to do is activate approach hold there, and you'll notice that we get some ILS approach information on the FMA. And you can see now that the aircraft is now holding the F speed there, you can hear the engines coming back up to speed. So these next few steps, I'm going to run through very quickly, but this is just configuring the plane for landing. So, let me just get my notes here. So now that we've got flaps two, we're almost lined up with the runway. I'm going to go gear down. I'm going to arm the spoilers. I'm going to set the auto brake. For Inverness, we can use auto brake low. And then I'm going to turn on the nose wheel lights and the runway turn offs. Okay. So what I've actually just done as well is just pause the aircraft because there's a lot that's going to be happening in very quick succession so I just want to adequately explain everything. So what I did just then was just configure the airplane for flights and if we have a look at the center ECAM you'll also notice here that we've actually got like a little kind of mini checklist here. So very much like preparing the aircraft for takeoff there's a sort of a mini checklist for configuring the aircraft for landing and what you want to do is make sure that there is no blue text here. So it just confirms that landing gear is down, the seatbelt signs are on, the cabin is ready, the spoilers are armed. Something which is not mentioned on this is the auto brake system, so you want to make sure to remember to turn on either the auto brake to low or medium. Normally for landing you would never use max, it will either be low or medium auto braking for landing. So you can see here that the last step we have is just to throw the flaps out to full, which I will do when we intercept the glide slope, which should be in a couple of seconds time. Okay, so I'm going to unpause now, and we'll continue along our way. So if you have a look at the um, ILS information here, we're 8 nautical miles away from the airport now. You can see that we've got the runway ahead of us. So all we're waiting on now is for to intercept the glide slope. So as we're now lined up with the runway, what we can do is we can turn on the second autopilot. So if we wanted to auto land, we would now not do anything else with the aircraft. Right, let me just pause again because I don't want to miss anything here. So the reason that you turn on both autopilots, um, one is because it enables the auto land feature. If we have a look at the FMA here, you can see that we've got a CAT Category 3 ILS system, and we now have dual control here. So if for any reason one of the autopilot computers failed during the approach, the other one could take over. 
However, with both autopilots enabled, that also enables the plane to complete an autoland procedure. You'll also notice on the FMA here that the glide slope mode is also been armed, but it's not yet active. So what will happen? What I'll do is when the glide slope mode becomes active, that's when I'll extend the flaps to stage three, and then very quickly after that, stage four. The speed change between stage three and stage four isn't that great. So um, usually you can do one after the other very quickly. So before I continue, I just want to explain what I'm going to do for this landing. So I said a few seconds ago that you can auto land this. So if you do want to auto land this aircraft, all you would simply do is let the aircraft fly itself down to the runway. And then when you get to about the flare height, which is between maybe 20 and 30 feet above the ground, all you need to do as the pilot with the auto land mode is just reduce the throttle to idle and the aircraft will pretty much land itself. However, for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take manual control of the landing and flare it myself. So I'm going to explain this now before I continue just to kind of, so I'm not panicking and not trying to explain everything as it's happening. So once the glide slope has been captured and I get the flaps out to full or position four, what I'm going to do is just run through the landing checklist. So that's just double checking various steps just to make sure that the plane is actually fully configured for landing. Okay, so here we go. So now the sim is running again. We're just going to wait until we intercept the glide slope, which should be any second now. There we have glide slope mode is now enabled and you can see the aircraft is now pitching down. So we will go flaps three. And then we'll go flaps four. So what happens now is the aircraft will slow down to the V approach speed there, which is the magenta triangle. And you notice that the aircraft is still in manage mode, so it's still managing the speed automatically. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just double check the landing checklist here. So we want to make sure that landing gear is down, which it is, and we've got three green lights there. The spoilers are armed, so they're in this up armed position here. The auto brakes have been set, which they have, to low. The nose light has been set to the takeoff position, and the landing lights are also on. So I'm happy that the aircraft is configured for landing, so what I'm going to do now is just disable the both autopilots here. Now I'm going to get a master caution, that is normal, so we can just cancel that, that's to be expected, we can cancel that happily. So now I'm in manual control of the plane, I'm not in control of the auto throttles. The auto throttles are still on and they're going to manage that speed automatically. Now I've noticed with this aircraft that there's sometimes um, a difference between what you see on the Papi or Vazi lights 1, and the indication that you get on the glide slope here. So you may start to get some glide slope warnings. It's completely up to you whether you want to fly by the ILS indications or the or fly visually. Um, at this point, if it's good visibility, I would recommend going by visual reference um, or kind of using both, but uh, just be aware that you might start to get some warnings about the glide slope. So for the actual landing itself, what's going to happen is I'm going to get to about 30 feet. You're going to start to hear the call outs, 50, 40, 30. And then the famous retard, retard call out, which basically means reduce the throttles to idle, slow the plane down. So when I get to 30 feet, that's when I'm going to start to flare the aircraft. 400. I'm going to reduce the throttles at the same time and then um, we'll put it down gently. 100 above. 300. Now Minimum. also keep an eye on the central ECAM display as well, because when I land I'm going to throw out the thrust reversers and it will show it on the N1 display on the ECAM that the reversers are enabled. 100. I'll try and highlight that in the video after, after recording. 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, idle, 20, retard, 10, Flare. 5. And we're down, so thrust reversers out. Hopefully you can see that on the ECAM there. So we hold the thrust reversers out until about 70 knots. 
just make sure we keep the aircraft in the centre line as best as we can. So that's 70 knots, so throttles back to idle. Let the auto brakes manage the braking. So you keep the auto brakes on until about uh, 30 knots. And then just manually hit the brakes there to disable the auto brake system. And you'll notice the aircraft twitch slightly. And that is, uh, surprisingly, a relatively good landing here at Inverness. So, um, also at this point, if you did do an auto land procedure, what you would need to do is also turn off the autopilots at this point after you've slowed down to a safe speed. So, what I'm going to do is just pull off to the side of the runway here. Now, the next few steps you would actually do during your taxi back to the uh, to the terminal or to the stand or to your parking position. What I'm going to do, just to make it a bit easier on myself, uh, and because it's a very short taxi here at Inverness, is I'm actually just going to stop the plane to run through the cleanup procedure. So, after landing, the first thing we can do is turn off the chrono or the timer here. So we now have an accurate um, indication of how long we were flying. Next, we can turn the nose lights to taxi. Once we're off the runway, we can turn the landing lights off and also turn the runway turn-off lights to off as well. And finally, also turn the strobe off as well. So you can turn that either to auto or to the off position. Next, turn the TCAS back to standby. Bring the flaps up all the way to zero. Uh, retract the spoilers. And also turn the weather radar off. So just hit this little switch, knock that back to the central or off position there. After that, we can turn the landing system off. So just right click on that LS button there. And then check the lower central ECAM here. We just want to make sure that the brake temperatures are below 300 degrees Celsius. If they're above 300, then just turn on the brake fan just to help cool them down. But if they're below 300, don't worry about it. And then finally, we can start the APU. So just hit the APU master switch. Keep an eye on the lower ECAM. Make sure that the flap open message shows up. And then hit the start button there. So as I said, normally you would do all of that just after you leave the runway and as you're heading towards the, uh, as you're taxiing towards your parking position. But just for this uh, tutorial, I just stopped just to talk through that. It makes it easier for me rather than trying to taxi and talk at the same time. <clears throat> so after that, simply continue towards the parking area. Okay, so here we are just about to reach our parking position. So this is going to be quite tricky trying to park up without uh, Without any external view or any um, Sort of system to help me park here. So let's see if we can get this So turn in towards the terminal here Now where's the nose wheel gonna stop? Let's see there. I think that's about it. So, first thing to do once you've parked up is to turn on the parking brake. Next, you simply turn engine masters 1 and 2 off. So that will turn off the engines. So just keep an eye on the upper ECAM here. Just make sure the engines slow down to a safe speed. Once they are at safe speed, then you can turn off the beacon light. That just tells the ground crews that yes it's safe to now approach the aircraft the engines are off it's now safe to approach the aircraft so turn that off and then also turn the nose lights to the off position as well also on the upper overhead you can also turn the seatbelt signs off at this point and now all the passengers do their mad dash to get to the doors after that you can turn off all of the fuel pumps so let me just change the view quickly so the fuel pumps to turn off will be left tank 1 and 2, so just right click on those, centre tank 1 and 2, so that one and that one, and then right tank 1 and 2, so just turn all of those off. Now speaking of passengers rushing through the doors, we can also uh, set all of our ground services back up. So first thing to do is set the traffic cones, set the wheel chocks, and also if you wish, add an external ground power unit. And then once all of those are in place, also open up whichever doors you require. So usually front and aft left are going to be passenger doors and then you've got your front cargo 
and I have the cargo as well. There we go. Okay, and now I believe it's standard procedure for aircraft nowadays to save a bit of fuel by running off external power after they park up. So you can see that we've got external power is available up here, so we'll just click on that. So the plane is now being supplied by its APU and external power. But to save fuel, we can now turn off the master switch. Also reduces noise pollution at an airport. Because remember, the APU is essentially a mini jet engine, so it's very loud. So to save a bit of noise pollution and save a bit of fuel, you can also turn that off now that the aircraft is being supplied by external power. And that brings the aircraft back into what is essentially its turnaround state. So if you were going to fly another flight or fly another leg of a journey, now you would go back to your cockpit preparation stage of flight and just make sure that everything is in the correct position after land <coughs> pardon me, after landing, and then you would then go through and start planning the next flight, essentially, and start entering all of the data back into the MCDU for the next flight. And that is about it for the approach and landing. So I hope this video helped you guys. And um, actually, while we're here, let me just see how well did I park. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. I almost got the nose wheel right on the uh, the kind of the parking uh, marker there. Not too bad. Anyway, so that was the approach and landing in this, the Airbus A320. So I'm going to have a couple more tutorials. I'm going to cover a few abnormal procedures such as rejected takeoff and the go around procedure. So um, yeah, there's going to be a couple more videos with this aircraft. But that essentially covers everything you need to know from a cold and dark start all the way up to landing and parking the plane. So before I wrap up, I just want to say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters, as always, and also thank you to everyone for watching. So um, yeah, I will catch you in the next video. So for now, thank you very much for watching, and take care out there, and I will catch you all later.